Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, that also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Hi everyone, Laszlo here. Before we get started with today's episode, I'm excited to announce the launch of my new audio courses covering the history of Chinese philosophy. If you've ever been curious about Chinese philosophy and want to develop a comprehensive understanding or be able to explain to your family or colleagues the differences between Confucianism and Taoism or what's in the Book of Changes, one of the most widely published books in the world, these courses are for you. I cordially invite you to go to avid.fm slash Laszlo to take a look. I'll have this link in the show notes. My thanks to all of you, and I hope you'll enjoy these courses. Welcome back again. Laszlo Montgomery here. Another good and decent Cheng Yu, worthy of any self-respecting compendium of Chinese idioms. Kou Mi Fu Jian, a classic, going back to the Zizhi Tong Jian, presented to the Northern Song Emperor Ying Zong in 1084 by one of the great literati of an age of great literati, Sima Guang. Besides being a veritable depository of great Chinese idioms, this historical events retold as a mirror for government was a history of China from 403 to 959, the start of the 16 kingdoms to the fall of the later Zhou and the unification of the north and south of the country by Zhao Kuangyin, who founded the Song in 960. And from this great document, from these official histories commissioned by emperors throughout the dynasties, we get a whole slew of halfway decent Chengyus, including this one, Kou Mi Fu Qian, a mouth of honey and a dagger in the belly. These four characters... Well, ko is mouth, mi is honey, fu is your belly, abdomen, or stomach, and a jian is a double-edged sword. Mouth, honey, stomach, or belly, sword. Eh, this is one of those that could be anything. You need to know the backstory. And this one goes back to the Tang Dynasty, the time of Emperor Xuanzong, whose Kaiyuan era was a golden age during this dynasty. And the villain in the story is his chancellor for 18 years, Li Linfu. He dominated the Tang government during his long run as chancellor, and Xuanzong trusted him with his life. The thing about Li Linfu was that he was known for the way he would flatter you to your face, and the way he went on and on with Emperor Xuanzong. It was, it was the stuff of legends. He would butter up the emperor like nothing else, and he knew how to always stay in Xuanzong's good graces. And not only to the emperor, even to everyone else at court, to their face he would be nothing except the most genteel, self-effacing, respectful, complimentary person you could imagine. I mean, even being such a high-ranking person in the government, right-hand man to the emperor... Well, he couldn't say enough good things to his fellow officials to their face when he saw them. But one thing about Li Lin Fu, he was a very jealous and paranoid guy and had a compulsive fear that someone else at court might outshine him and replace him. So whenever the emperor would ask him about promoting so-and-so, Li Lin Fu would assure the emperor, bad choice. And he would say a few things to disparage the integrity of the man, and man, that was that. Shenzong would perish the thought. And that guy who Li Linfu stabbed in the back? Well, that same morning, the chancellor just couldn't have been more commendatory, praising him up and down and applauding his daily work. But when it came time to put in a good word for him to the emperor, they stabbed him in the back, gave false accusations. 
and Li Lin Fu was notorious for this. And for years and years, good and capable officials were denied promotions or to serve in positions of power because Li Lin Fu didn't want anyone getting a leg up on him or even get close to the emperor, who he manipulated with flattery and yeah, through a network of spies that informed him of every single conversation, encounter, whisper, and secret that went on in the Neiting, the inner palace where the emperor lived. And what ended up happening over time was that with so many capable officials denied key positions in government, what the emperor got instead was a lot of mediocrity and ho-hum ministers who were beholden to Li Lin Fu. And without proper stewardship of this greatest empire that China had ever seen in its history, uh, things indeed deteriorated. And Li Lin Fu died in 753, and within a few years, the whole dynasty was in danger of being torn down by the devastation of the Anlu Shan Rebellion of 755 to 763. So this one is useful. People today are still by nature, still the same as they were in the 8th century. And the classic two-faced backstabber who's so pleasant and nice to you when you're face-to-face with them, but destroys you when he talks to others about you behind your back, eh, never goes out of style. And maybe some of you have had the misfortune to be acquainted with one or two of these types. Their mouth is honey, kou mi, but in their belly lies a sword, fu qian. Kou mi fu qian. Pleco defines this Chinese saying as honey-mouthed and dagger-hearted, hypocritical and malignant, with an iron hand and a velvet glove, a Judas kiss, hypocritical and murderous. <laughs> Stay away from these types with their glove tie and firm handshake, sudden look in the eye and their easy smile. Li Lin Fu, by the way, <laughs> he got his in the end. After he died, someone went to Shenzong and just dumped on him accused Li Lin Fu of all these terrible things he did to cause trouble for the emperor. And because of this, and giving Li Lin Fu a funeral fit for a king with all kinds of posthumous honors, he had him stripped of everything and given a commoner's funeral and a commoner's grave. And for good measure, because you know, this was one of the things they used to do back in those days, they exiled his whole family to a place much less pleasant to live than the capital, Chang'an. So if you know someone... At work, at the gym, amongst your group of friends and colleagues. And one of them is always nice to you, but you suspect they're trashing you when you ain't around. They are kou mi fu qian. Be careful around these kou mi fu qian people, in person and online. Okay, that's today's Chinese saying. This is a very well-known cheng yu. But like it is with a lot of these Chinese idioms, there's always some story that goes with it. And that, mes amis, is the whole raison d'etre of the Chinese Sayings podcast. All right, that's all I got for you today. Hey, don't forget, besides this fine program suitable for people of all ages, there's also the Tea History podcast and the flagship program of the whole Teacup Media Network, the China History podcast. Find those fine programs wherever podcasts are given away free. You can also find them at the website at teacup.media. Everything is in there, all in one place, along with downloadable PDFs of all the Chinese terms used in the episode. Shop at my store, buy a t-shirt, subscribe to my newsletter, donate. Hey, that's at teacup.media. Okay, Laszlo Montgomery signing off from Los Angeles in beautiful Southern California. Take care and come back again next time for another golden nugget here at the Chinese Sayings Podcast.